I'm Molly Superthor, a hand lettering artist, author, and designer of tools for other hand lettering artists and illustrators. Among those tools are Procreate brushes, and today I want to walk you through my latest pack of brushes, which are watercolor calligraphy brushes for Procreate. I worked on these really hard to make them as realistic watercolor as possible and optimized for script calligraphy lettering. Before I dive into the demonstration where I'm going to show you absolutely everything that this powerful kit has to offer, I want to point out to you that also included in the download is this instructional sheet. It's almost like a quick guide for different techniques for making your watercolor more realistic. I have here a blank 8.5 by 11 canvas. And to get started, I want to paint in a background that's more realistic than this stark white. I want to have something that really emulates watercolor paper. So in my brush palette in the watercolor calligraphy library, I'm scrolling down to the very, very bottom and starting with my bonus cotton paper background brush. Now I created this to really emulate what traditional watercolor paper looks like. And if you've used that, you know that it's not pure, pure white. It's more like a, a soft off-white. So let's start by selecting a nice off-white from our color palette. Uh, I've come over here sort of in the yellowy orange range, and I'm pulling a bit away from the pure white. Not much, just slightly. And now I'll just paint over my canvas. And let me zoom in here so that you at home can really get a good look. You can see that this really emulates that um, texture that real cotton watercolor paper has. So with my background created, I'll make a new blank layer. Now here is something crucial that I want to point out to you in case you've never utilized this tool in Procreate. You see how up here in my color palette I have not one but two swatches? This is a relatively new but very cool um, aspect of Procreate where you can choose a secondary color to work with. So if I tap over here on the second swatch, I can choose a different color for myself, something uh, much higher contrast. So let me choose this kind of fuchsia there and for my initial color, something like a, a purple. Now this comes into play when you're creating ombre effect lettering and you're using brushes that pull on a second color to incorporate into the first. And this watercolor pack that I've created does pull on these a lot. And I'm gonna demonstrate that for you here. Just looking through our brush library, the very first two brushes are not for painting, they're for smudging. And this is a crucial element of the process of making realistic watercolor. These two brushes are used not with the paintbrush tool, but with the smudge tool. So here in the smudge tool, that's where you're gonna to wanna to come in and select these two brushes depending on the use, and, and I'm gonna show you that. Okay, so here in the brushes palette, let's start with watercolor script number one. You can see immediately that I have another brush right underneath it called watercolor script one ombre. And that's the case with all of these specific script brushes. All of them, one through 10, have an ombre version right below. And like I just said, ombre is the effect that pulls on these two colors in the palette. So let's get started right here and just, just create something. Now here's the word paint, and just to start off with, I'm zooming in slightly so that you can see this watercolor script number one brush and the texture that it creates. It's kind of like a wobbly, um, uneven texture in each stroke. The other thing you might first notice is that we have these regions where the strokes overlapped. And so with any semi-translucent brush, you're going to get this kind of overlap. But if you've done real watercolor calligraphy, you know that that is not realistic because the wet paint would bleed into itself and there wouldn't be such strong stroke overlaps. So this is where those smudge brushes come in. I'll immediately come over to my smudge brush palette and select the top one, smudge brush for blending stroke overlaps. It is exactly what it sounds like. So I'll zoom in here and I'm just going to very lightly smudge this out. 
I like to sometimes leave little darker spots because that is realistic in watercolor. There are more concentrated spots of color and less concentrated spots. So there we have our word painted in watercolor script one. But what happens if we select the same brush but in the ombre version? Again, here I want to just show you that I have these two colors selected. A couple things to note when you're painting with ombre. Number one, the ombre color changes every time you lift your pen and put it down again. So if I were to create a word and never lift my brush, the color is not going to change. So it is crucial with all types of ombre brushes that you lift your pen wherever you want the color to change. So let's just try writing out that same word. Knowing full well that we can use that smudge brush next to really blend these colors together. Okay, so because this is that watercolor strip number one, just like the above, the texture of the strokes and the opacity and all of that is the same, and the only difference is the actual color change in the ombre effect. So I'll come in with my smudge brush, the same one as before, and I'll smudge these out. So there you have it. Here's an ombre version and a non-ombre version of the exact same you can really see that the ombre version of this brush picks up a lot of colors in the range of purples. So it, it went a bit into the pinks, into the corals, into the bluer purples. And I did that on purpose because that means that you don't have to be going around changing your swatches uh, as well as lifting your strokes. You're really going to get a nice, fun ombre effect. Now before I move on to demonstrate all of the other brushes, I want to show you a great trick for making these immediately look even more realistic. And that's to come into your layers palette and tap the N icon here on the far right of the layer. And that adjusts the blending mode and the opacity of your layer. So all I want to do is change the blending mode from normal to linear burn. Now, did you see that difference here again? Normal, linear burn. It's subtle, but what that did was allow the texture of that cotton paper below it to really shine through, as if the color has really bled into that paper and been absorbed even slightly more unevenly than our original painting. And that is very realistic in watercolor. The texture of the paper that you use does really dictate how your paint dries, how it's absorbed, and how the paint color concentration appears once it's dry. Now create a blank layer and set it immediately to linear burn because I know I like all of my watercolor layers set to that blending mode. And I'll turn my paper here and do a quiet demonstration of the other nine brushes in this palette plus their ombre versions.
So now you can really see the range of strokes and textures and opacities that are present in all 10 of these brushes and how the different ombre brushes have different color changing effects and characteristics. In the instructional file that I've given you, which comes as a layered Procreate file and a PDF, I've also provided this document so that you'll have a quick reference to compare all 10 brushes in their translucency, textures, bleed, etc as well as samples of the different ombre color changes of each of the 10 brushes, and some samples showing the ways in which the primary and secondary colors that you choose from your swatches will affect the ombre color change. Now there are a couple more techniques for adding more watercolor texture uh, to the letter forms themselves, and one of them is to use the second type of smudge brush, the smudge brush for adding bleed to edges. Remember to use it with your smudge tool. And if you use this, play around a lot with the opacity because um, it's really gonna give you a different effect based on how light or dark the color of your letters is. So let's come into this E. This is um, a brush that has a relatively crisp stroke, but let's say that you want it to bleed more. Well, then you can take that smudge brush and you can just pull it around the edges and you're gonna just soften and remove that uh, crisp edge and create a more natural looking bleed into the paper. And the other little hack to show you is that you can play around a lot with the lightness and darkness of the watercolors. Remember how I said that a lot of them have translucency? Well, let's say that you want to use one of the brushes but have it be a bit less translucent. All you're gonna do is take your layer, swipe left and duplicate it, and because there's some translucency, when the two layers overlap, they become a lot darker. All of the blending modes that you choose will create different effects based on how they lay over the layer below it. And now to cap off this demonstration, I just want to walk you through the other types of brushes that come in this brush pack, apart from the actual script lettering brushes themselves. So scrolling down here, you'll see first of all this watercolor splatter stamp. It does adhere to the size of your brush, so you can make tiny ones and bigger ones, and I think that the combination adds some realism. Just like the lettering layers, in order to darken these, you just duplicate them, and you can do so as much as you want, and you can get more or less translucency depending on your design. Next we're looking at the watercolor washes, and I have four different watercolor washes plus ombre versions of each one. This is watercolor wash number one, and you'll see that it also adheres to the size of your brush, and it's pressure sensitive. All of these watercolor washes are, in fact. So if I very lightly wash over my screen, I get a light wash, and if I press hard, I get a much darker one. All right, so here we have wash number one, and here's the ombre version. You can see in my color palette I have pink and yellow, so we should get something in between those two. And we do indeed, we get some pinks and some yellows and then the in-between, some corals. Here's what watercolor wash two looks like. When you zoom in and compare the edges, you can see that number two has more brushy strokes coming off of it. It isn't as crisp and watery on the edges. And now for the ombre version. Zooming in here, you can see that I have that golden color and the pink blending together, almost as if you went over your page once with pink and then dotted the orange on again afterward. Here's wash number three. This has more translucency, but it's still pressure sensitive. So that's pressing down hard. And this is pressing down lightly. But when I zoom in, you can see that there's more texture in this wash compared to say the first and the second ombre version. And I'm lifting as I go here and you can see that I just get um, even more of a range between that orange and the pink in this particular wash brush. And here's number four. This is the most textured of all. Again, pressure sensitive, but you're getting that dark to light plus darker texture and lighter texture. And now the ombre version. This really focuses more on that center merging between the two swatches, so you get this nice coral color. These washes are useful for making backgrounds, for example, like this, reducing the opacity perhaps slightly. And then on a new layer, 
even creating some watercolor uh, lettering right over top of it. Now, I have another set of watercolor wash brushes, but these are for backgrounds. They don't have those edges, they're for covering your entire canvas. Here's wash number one. These are meant to be used with, of course, any color, but if you use a darker color, you can always come back in and reduce the opacity. And again, setting this to linear burn helps that paper texture really come through. Here's background wash number two, which has more of a cloudy effect. Background wash three, again, cloudy, but even more texture to each stroke. And background wash four. If you've ever done watercolor washes with real watercolor, and then you've used the technique where you sprinkle salt on top of the drying paint, this is the effect that you get. It's like these um, grains of salt absorb the liquid and they create darker spots with light areas around them. It's one of my favorite, most relaxing things to do actually. So I really wanted to make a brush that emulated that to some degree. And last but not least, the second bonus brush in this pack is a soft graphite pencil because what watercolor toolkit wouldn't be complete without something to sketch with. This is both pressure sensitive and tilt sensitive. So if I brush lightly, I get a light pencil. If I press hard, I get a dark pencil. If I use my pen more upright, I get this uh, sharp line, but if I tilt my pen at an angle, just like with a pencil, and I brush sort of with the side of my stylus, I get this um, sort of softer shading look. In that same instructional packet that I've given you as a PDF and a Procreate file, I have also included samples of the watercolor washes, the individual ones, the backgrounds, and the splatters so that you also have samples of these to look at as references as you create your work. Thank you so much for following along with this tutorial. If you already own this brush pack, I hope this has helped you make the most out of it. And if you're thinking of buying it, I hope this has helped you make your decision. As always, tag me in your work on Instagram so that I can see what you're up to. I always like to see what people create from my brush packs, my books, and my tutorials.